The Radeon Pro Duo. People have been waiting for this thing to release since AMD showed off the PCB for the card back in June 2015. If you didn't know, Fiji was the first mainstream graphics chip to feature high bandwidth memory, and AMD launched three separate models of graphics card featuring the chip. The R9 Fury X with water cooling, the R9 Fury, a full-size card with air cooling, and the R9 Nano, a slightly underclocked small form factor model. Those cards all had pretty awesome performance by themselves, so it was expected that the Fury X2, as some were calling the Pro Duo before its launch, would be the ultimate gaming card. However, AMD delayed the launch of the card from fall 2015 to spring 2016, saying they were aiming to synchronize with the launch of the two big high-end VR headsets, the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. So now it's launched, and with two Fiji chips, this appears to be the most powerful single card solution on the market at the time of filming. But is the Pro Duo the new graphics card to have, or is it too little, too late? You tell me. AMD's tagline for the Radeon Pro Duo is for gamers who create and creators who game, but it's pretty clear that they're aiming more towards the creator side of that equation. It can reach 16 teraflops of compute performance thanks to its 8192 stream processors and 128 compute units, making it the most powerful graphics card in terms of raw compute power on the market. This card would undeniably serve well as an upgrade to game developers and graphics artists, but does it also make sense for gamers? That definitely depends, mostly on budget, because the Pro Duo goes for $1,500 US and around $2,000 Canadian. Whew! But as the Radeon and Pro in the Radeon Pro Duo's name suggest, it looks to bridge the gap between AMD's gaming and professional lines of graphics cards. Alright, let's look at the card itself. It retains the same soft touch metal design we saw on the Fury X, with a nickel plated aluminum chassis covering the entire card save for the GPU cutouts on the back. There's also those same LED Radeon logos on the front and the top. For I.O., we've got three full-size display ports and one HDMI port. It originally had four display ports, but they replaced one with that HDMI because you do need one to run the Oculus Rift. They also apparently needed three 8-pin power connectors, which is strange given that AMD's last dual GPU card, the 295X2, had two 8-pin connectors and a higher TDP of 500 watts to the Radeon Pro Duo's 350. Uh, oh well. And we've got nice sleeved tubes running to the extra thick 120 millimeter radiator. We mentioned the number of stream processors earlier, so let's look at the rest of the specs. As we said, it uses a full Fiji XT GPU built on the 28 nanometer process with eight gigs of HBM, but of course that's four gigs per GPU, so you have effectively four gigs until people develop solutions to solve that problem. The core clock for the GPUs goes up to 1000 megahertz, not beyond, meaning that these chips have the same hard limit that the R9 Nano has. So what you have here is effectively two R9 Nanos combined into a single graphics card. Let's take a look at what that means for performance. Now I can say the Pro Duo is like having two R9 Nanos in Crossfire, but really that's not true. It's not like that, it is that. Exactly. Because dual GPU cards are still two separate GPUs, the performance benefit that you get from having two of them on one card is dependent on Crossfire support for whatever program or game you're using. We tested the Radeon Pro Duo in this badass Skylake NCIX PC built around an NZXT Noctis. In our tests with GTA 5, Rise of the Tomb Raider, The Witcher 3, and Battlefield 4, the Radeon Pro Duo was around 20 to 30% faster than the 295X2 and about on par with R9 Nanos and Crossfire, both of which we also tested head to head back in January. We also tested it against two Fury X's in Crossfire fire, and no surprises, the Pro Duo was always a few frames behind. Now where this card is really going to shine though is not in games, but in professional applications. AMD is heavily positioning this card as a tool for developers, especially VR, with the Pro Duo being the only product in its new Radeon VR Ready Creator program. No other single card can touch its compute performance, so it would be a good option for creators who need a heavy hitting professional card, but like to do some gaming too. For people who would just use this to game, this wouldn't be the best option because A, there are better performing card setups for less money, and B, AMD is going to launch Polaris in June, which will reportedly bring great performance and excellent power reduction. So if you've got a hankering to upgrade, you'll do well to be patient a little longer. And that pretty much does it for this video, guys. Dual Fiji finally showed up. Not as the gaming behemoth that we expected, but as a bridge between AMD's Radeon gaming line and their Fire Pro professional line. Great news for developers who game, but for gamers, let's just see what Polaris has to offer. 
Thanks for watching. You can click here to watch more videos, follow us on social media over here, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. And that's it. I didn't write an outro. So, see you later.